Hello, my name is Sebastian Bengsch. I'm working for the Institute of Microproduction Technology at the Leibniz University Hannover. I'd like to welcome you to my presentation of thin film transferring via PVA substrate and contacting of sensor inside an LSDMR matrix. I will start with the content. At first, I'll begin with an introduction. Then I will show you the description of the method. I will talk a bit about the manufacturing. Uh, I will give you an uh, evaluation of our uh, systems. And uh, in the end, I will show you a demonstrator uh, and give you a summary of an outlook. Our motivation. Highly flexible substrates for sensor applications, for example, as in elastomers, um, or rubber substrates have recently been in the focus of research. There have been a lot of um, research going on in this uh, kind of field, and it is uh, especially interesting in the field of soft robotics or human robot interactions. Um, it is very um, complicated to integrate um, sensor systems inside a highly flexible LSTM matrix. So, uh, common systems. Um, which are usually foil based, uh, like on Kapton foil, or that are um, based on silicon substrates, uh, are not very good integratable into such flexible systems. Um, also, the contacting is a very challenging um, situation because um, contacting a flexible um, sensor inside an elastomer body with stiff, for example, cables is uh, not uh, the, um, the right choice of contacting. So um, even common foil-based sensors we know, um, which are usually based on Kapton, um, they change, uh, they face challenges um, in case of the high uh, elastic behavior of the elastomers, which is usually in the double-digit range uh, more than 10% and in some uh, applications even up to 100%. Um, so the uh, Institute of Microproduction Technology thought of a, a substrateless integration of sensors inside a rubber matrix. Uh, our method is based on the steps you can see above. Um, it is um, divided into uh, six steps. So we start with the green rubber substrate. Um, then in the second step, the calendaring will smooth the surface we need. We veer uh, punch hole or we punch hole vias into the uh, calendared rubber, and then we apply conductive rubber by Dr. Blading. Um, we have a pre-structured PVA substrate with a uh, PVD-based sensor, and we apply the sensor in the fifth step onto the green rubber substrate and the uh, conductive via structures. And the sixth step, the water uh, will remove or applied water will remove the uh, PVA substrate, the polyvinyl alcohol, and only the metallic thin film, which is our sensor structure, will be inside a, a sandwich and will be vulcanized in the end. So the basic main steps for the application of sensor is the application of the sensor on the unvulcanized substrate, the dissolution of the PVA using water, and um, the contacting and vulcanization in the last step. Concerning the manufacturing, we started with applying sensor or PVD thin film structures on green rubber. As you can see in figure two, the substrate is very rough and not planar at all. Therefore, it is very challenging to apply a very good sensor structure onto such a substrate. But the PVA can be erased. And in the third picture, you can see that um, we have an applied thin film on the rubber substrate and uh, micro cracks occur which do not lead to a loss of signal. We've used a PVA supplied by the company Sulubron, which is at the uh, in, in size between or no, thickness is between 25 and 50 micrometers. The uh, via uh, material uses a, a conductive polyidene 
And uh, we can see in some samples that uh, the resistivity before and after transferring the thin film doesn't change um, much. In, in one case, we have, for example, 76 ohm base resistance of the sensor before applying and after applying on the green rubber substrate. It is 87 ohm. Uh, we have tried different uh, thin film thicknesses between 100 and 300 nanometer, whereas big or thick, thicker thin films will lead to a better, a better stability of the system. So we started or we went on with um, um, a layout we uh, know which would be possible onto common substrates like Kapton. So we built a wheatstone half bridge, uh, which has been uh, built up on the PVA and transferred on the green rubber, which can be seen in figure four. And uh, we have tested these uh, wheatstone half bridge. We can see that an elongation uh, after vulcanization is possible. And we can see that uh, the resistance changed in a, in a strain gauge behavior. And um, we've created these um, Wheatstone half bridge using shadow mass. These shadow masks can be lasered using PET foil or for higher resolutions down to 30 micrometers, we can use um, stainless steel foils, which has been lasered, which have been lasered. So um, an interesting thing is the um, behavior of our vulcanized thin films um, on the rubber um, and we've tried different rubber compounds as well as different thin film compounds. We've used uh, thin film materials. We use basically gold and uh, platinum um, because of the high um, re chemical reactivity of um, green rubber substrates. Therefore, we have generated um, a lot of uh, test samples which has been tested due to their lifetime. Um, because if you think of a rubber system, for example, like a tire of a car, they see more than 10 million cycles of compression and elongation. And therefore, we set ourselves the goal that we want to see how our um, metallic thin film layers behave on vulcanized substrate after a million circles. We can see that uh, only one compound um, survived the uh, one million circles cycles, and that's the uh, tread compound using gold as a thin film layer. In Figure Seven, we vulcanized a sandwich of a gold um, thin film layer into a um, tread compound, and we can see that even if it's inside a sandwich matrix, the long-term stability um, of such a system is given. With this knowledge, we build up a demonstrator, and the demonstrator. Um, uh, was now um, built using a different uh, sensor layout because we can see that uh, in uh, the first layout for the Wheatstone half bridge that uh, only elongations up to 5% were possible and foil-based sensors commonly um, uh, can face elongations up to 4%. Some can uh, develop since re developments reach up to 10%, but our goal was higher. Uh, we wanted to um, reach at least 100%. Therefore, we uh, increased the footprint of the sensor and we vulcanized the sensor into a sandwich. And in figure eight, the white spots you can see is the contact in area, which is a via-like structure to contact the sensor inside the vulcanized substrate. Um, we have um, pulled the sensor in X and Y direction, and we can see that there is a high shape anis anisotropy, and um, it shows that in X axis, we can pull up to 100% still having a signal, and in Y axis, we um, have a signal up to about 20%, and then there's a loss of signal, but the sensor isn't broken. If we go to back to 0% uh, of elongation, we um, gain back our base resistance. So um, to summarize and uh, give you an outlook on what we've created, we've shown that the manufacturing of a sensor in, inside a rubber matrix is possible, neglecting any substrate. So we only have the thin film sensor inside a rubber matrix, applying this thin film by water-soluble PVA. 
it shows a very great potential to uh, for an application, um, for example, as in a car tire. And it has a lot of potential in comparison to captain-based sensor. Um, if you think of um, of the tire, for example, in a car, uh, we face big struggle um, with the uh, service quality of the uh, of the material. Um, it is not planar as we know it from from our foil-based sensors, and is, it is very rough uh, concerning the surface. Um, also, the high chemical resistivity uh, reactivity is an issue. Uh, therefore, we could only use the platinum and the gold. And um, but we can say in the end that we've created a demonstrator which shows the potential of flexibility of up to 100% of and still having a sensor signal in such a sandwich matrix of rubber. And we see a high potential of industrial application for such a system um, because the application of the sensor can uh, start a, at a process um, as a process. Um, in common rubber manufacturing. I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. And I would like to thank the Institute of Microproduction Technology as well as the Institute of Rubber Technology um, for the opportunity and the equipment to investigate for this publication. Um, thank you very much and have a good day.